these allegations and accusations are serious against the court clerk down in Carlton County, Becky Hill. These are serious allegations, allegations that she influenced this jury, said things to this jury that were um, detrimental to the defense. You know, be, you watch his body language, don't, don't take him at his word, things like that. Having private, alleged, again, this is all just alleged. It's still a big if, but the accusations are extremely serious. Private conversations with the, with the jury foreperson, all of that problematic, making up controversy to get a juror tossed from the case as well. All of these are the allegations being made by the defense, and these accusations are absolutely serious. They are for real. And the defense is on the offensive. They're not sitting back. They're not waiting. They are pushing forward on this. And it's, it's significant. It's real. Um, it's real in that this is a real issue. When I say it's real, it's, it's not necessarily the truth. The, the, the truth, we'll have to wait and see. You know, when and if this judge or another judge brings everyone in, puts them under oath, puts them on the witness stand, has them testify about it, and then has them cross-examined. But Alec Murdoch's defense team remains on the offense. They are the ones pushing all of this forward. And it could result, it, it very well could result in the, the, the conviction being overturned. But will he get out? You see, that's the, to me, that's the real question in all of this. Justice for the victims, right? For Maggie and Paul um, is, is one thing. But if you believe someone it was, was, was able or... or, or in his mind, thought that this was a solution to a problem. This is a guy you don't want to ever see free on the streets again. Someone who in his mind thinks that the solution to his problem is to shoot his son's head off and then hunt down his wife with a rifle and shoot her as she's trying to get away? Like that's a solution to a problem? Someone who would think that is extremely dangerous, and not just dangerous to his own family, but dangerous to everybody. So will he get out, to me, is a really big question, and that's something we're going to tackle tonight because this man, Alec Murdoch, has lots and lots of other charges. And I'll be honest with you, today we tried to figure out exactly what all these charges are and how it's all lining up. And, and it's difficult because in, in the middle of this trial and, and covering the murder trial, there were all these other things that were out there. There were civil cases, the boat crash and all of that, but there were also other criminal charges in all different jurisdictions and different courts. And, and trying to ascertain and organize what these charges mean and how it could play out. Because it, it's, it's one of two things going on here, right, for Alec Murdoch. If he sees now that he's got that little glimmer of hope, is he going to fight all of these other charges to have trial after trial after trial and, and not cop to anything, not admit anything, because now he knows there's a possibility that that double murder trial could be overturned. And if it is overturned, you know, it's the same evidence. And, and you would think the same evidence would bring you the same result. Uh, but there could be rulings that are made that could prevent uh, the same evidence being put in front of the jury. But a lot of times appeals where cases are overturned is because there, were, there, there was evidence that was admitted that should not have been admitted and then the prosecutor's case changes a little bit. Or some witness testified who shouldn't have testified or said something they shouldn't have said. And now all of a sudden you don't have that in the retrial. In this it has nothing to do with the prosecution's case. It has to do with something else that happened with the jury, which, as I said in the beginning, is absolutely serious. And if it happened, I'll be the first one online saying he should get a new trial. If anyone interferes with the jury process, but I don't know if it happened because I haven't seen anyone come into court and testify about what they saw, what they heard. And I haven't seen them cross-examined. And I haven't heard Becky Hill either. I know she's denied all of it, but what's, what's her 
take on, on what happened between her and this juror or jurors during the course of the trial. Hopefully we'll find out. So let's, let's try to organize this tonight as we look at Alec Murdoch and his criminal cases and, and try to answer the question, could he get out and, and what's going to happen here? And there's three things that I want to look at tonight. Uh, the state financial charges, and we've heard a lot about this. We heard about it during his, during his uh, uh, criminal trial. And this is all the, the fraud and the, the money that he was stealing, et cetera. Um, all the things that he did to line his pockets with money. And those are state charges, okay? That means the attorney general's office is in charge. And there have been charges filed in different counties uh, down in the low country. Um, but it's the attorney general is in charge of bringing that case. Then there are federal charges. And again, these are sort of a, along the same lines, financial ch uh, uh, charges. Um, not murder, but... This, this fraud that he was engaging in as well. But the jurisdiction is different. It's, it's in federal court, so the Attorney General, Creighton Waters, people like that won't be involved. It's the feds. Completely different. But usually when you get caught up in federal court, the, the ramifications are serious when it comes to sentencing. Then there's the roadside shooting charges. Um, you remember that. We, we heard about it during the trial, that, that crazy thing where was he trying to get himself killed, or was he trying to make it look like someone was out to get him? Um, and there were charges in that case. What's going on with that? So this is sort of our roadmap for the show tonight. Um, so let's begin with the state financial charges. And Court TV uh, crime and justice correspondent Matt Johnson has more for us tonight on that. Seven, one, 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 on Saturday morning, February 2nd, 2018, 57-year-old Gloria Satterfield fell down the front steps of Maggie and Alec Murdoch's home in Culleton County, South Carolina. There she had worked as a longtime housekeeper for the Murdochs for more than 24 years. She's on the ground. She's on the ground. Is she conscious? Uh, no, not really. Satterfield was taken to the hospital, but suffered a stroke and went into cardiac arrest. Three weeks later, she died from her injuries. Now, after her death, Alec Murdoch met with Gloria's sons and told them how he planned to sue himself in order to secure an insurance settlement for them. He referred them to his best friend, fellow attorney and college roommate, Corey Fleming. They had Alex's insurance company pay $4.3 million, and none of the money went to the family and was split between Corey and Alex Murdoch. It wasn't until the fall of 2021, several months after Maggie and Paul were killed, that investigators began tracking Alec Murdoch's money trail. Alec Murdoch was arrested in October 2021, charged with 30 counts of financial crimes in the Gloria Satterfield case and held on $7 million bond. Six months later, in March of 2022, a judge approved a $4.3 million settlement in the lawsuit filed by Gloria Satterfield's sons, where he admitted that he was responsible and agreed to pay back the money. But her case was just the beginning. Gloria Satterfield doesn't appear to be the only target of Murdoch. Investigators say they uncovered evidence that he had been doing this for years, about a decade, stealing money from not only clients, but uh, folks at his law firm, even his own family members. The total, they say, about $9 million. Alec Murdoch is facing almost 100 counts of financial crimes dating back to 2011, including breach of trust, money laundering, computer crimes, and federal tax evasion. One of his alleged victims is a South Carolina highway patrolman that Murdoch is accused of stealing $192,000 from. I know Mr. Murdoch as my attorney. Always very nice to me, very cordial. But here's the problem. He treated me that nice, and he stole every dime I had. So I really want to kind of pare this down so we understand what he's facing. And we're going to start again with the state charges. What is the status of these charges? How much time is he facing? Um, how strong are these cases? Joining us tonight in Columbia, South Carolina, the attorney representing two of the Murdoch jurors and the family of Stephen Smith, Eric Bland. 
Also with us in Columbia, South Carolina, criminal defense attorney Lori Murray. And in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the director of the Wilmington University Criminal Justice Institute, retired FBI supervisory special agent Scott Duffy is with us. Great to see everyone tonight. Okay, Eric, let's start with these state charges. Um, how wide are they? He's supposed to be in court tomorrow. Um, how many charges is the attorney general handling all of these? And, 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 and what are we really talking about here? Well, I, I actually represent three of the jurors, three of the jurors that rendered a decision, um, Vinny. But going back to your question, and it's good, good to see you. These are very, very serious, broad-based felony charges in the multi-millions of dollars that if he's convicted of all these charges and a judge was to sentence him for all of those charges, it, it would be nine lifetimes or more that he would be spending uh, in jail. Um, the question is, when are they going to be, when are they going to be scheduled for trial? As we have talked about in previous shows, Dick Harpootlian is in the legislature. He has immunity from essentially January of every year through July. His wife is an ambassador to Slovenia, and he has told the court that he plans on seeing her after his legislative session is over with. So the earliest these financial trials could, could be scheduled and take place is probably sometime in the fall of 2024. What Dick is banking on is that there will be a reversal of the murder conviction based on what happened with Becky Hill. And if that happens, I would expect that they would try the murder case first, just like they did before. They may change their, their mind. I always thought that they should have gotten the financial crimes convictions first. But if they do that, then the murder trial will be sometime next fall in fall of 2024. And the financial crimes cases will get pushed further and further to the next uh, fall of 2025 because Dick will have legislative immunity from January to July of, of 2025. What is the problem for Dick is now he's he has telegraphed that he told the court that he's going to plead Alex guilty on September 21st to the federal court charges. If that happens, there's the possibility after the pre-sentence report is done and he's sentenced maybe four months from now, if he does go forward and plead to the federal charges, that Dick is going to want Judge Gergel, the federal court judge, to load him up with time. If the state court conviction is reversed, Alex will then go begin serving his federal time first. And if he gets a lot of years, he will serve all of that federal time. And then when it's over, depending if he's convicted of the murder charges, depending if he's convicted of the state court fraud charges, he would begin serving his state court time. But let's be clear, Alex is never going to get a breath of fresh air. Uh, you know, there is the possibility if they reverse the conviction quickly, there's a $7 million bond that's still out there that he would be able to make because he wouldn't be convicted of anything at that time. But Judge Gergel would schedule the trial of, if he goes for, if he doesn't go forward and plead on the 21st, which we talked about as a possibility, if he just decides, oh, I'm not going to plead to anything, I'm going to make everybody convict me, then Judge Gergel will schedule the, the trial very quickly, probably before the end of the year on the financial crimes. And you're, so talk, you're talking federal, though. I mean, you're talking federal. I'm, I'm just trying to keep everyone focused here. So what you're saying, you're talking about a trial for the federal case, not for the state financial charges here. No, the state financial case, the earliest it can try is, is the fall of 2024. And that's assuming that the murder conviction doesn't get reversed. Now, one of the things that's going to be interesting is tomorrow we have a status conference on all of this. We also have Corey Fleming's sentence. But what's going to be interesting is Becky Hill actually going to participate in any inquiry. And it's an inquiry that should be done by the state. It's a potential criminal charge, criminal jury tampering. So Dick is really not going to be able to participate, not going to be able to do depositions. I'd be shocked because it's an investigation that the state would want done. But the interesting thing is now that De the, uh, Becky Hill is in potential jeopardy, is she going to take the fifth if she's put on the stand because everybody's saying if oh, she wow. actually did this, wow. she should be criminally charged. 
So that's, the issue is going to be, are her lawyers going to put her on the stand in any inquiry, whether it's done by Judge Newman or another judge or the attorney general decides to impanel a grand jury? The real interesting part is Becky going to participate. If I'm yeah. her criminal lawyer and everybody's throwing darts at me, I may tell her you can't talk. Yeah. Lori, Murray, um, so the state financial crimes here, do you think because Alec Murdoch is seeing that glimmer of hope in his murder charges that these state charges are something that, oh, even though I may have admitted to something, I am going forward with this. Let's, let's, let's try it all because I got a chance now. No. I, I disagree with Eric. I've been uh, practicing criminal defense now for over 20 years. And, you know, what we like to do as criminal defense attorneys is make sure that our clients are serving their time in federal court. So right now he's serving his time in state court and he's hoping for that glimmer so that he gets a new trial so that the federal court case can go first. That's why he scheduled his plea. That's why he's trying to get into front of Judge Gergel. Uh, initially, and then hoping that he gets a new trial because you can run state charges concurrent to federal time, but you cannot run federal time concurrent to state time. So I disagree with uh, Eric on that that point because if he does go in and we pleads said guilty the same to thing, these, Laurie. I, th I think he said no. the same thing. We said the exact same. No, thing. he said. I said the same no, thing. I thought you. I'm sorry. Just give me a second. I, you said you. It would. He would wait until the end, and he would have to serve his state time after his federal time. That's what you said. So that's not necessarily right. gonna, true. With as these. long as his state time is reversed, he's got to get that murder conviction reversed. Then he has no convictions okay. and he's going to plead to federal court time. And then he would be, he would go into federal state court while he has his federal charges, while he's in federal custody, he would be brought into state court. He would plead guilty to the state charges, and then he would run his state time concurrent to his federal time. It would not Correct. be consecutive afterwards. He wouldn't wait until the very end of it to serve his time. So he's hoping, yes, that, that Judge Gergel loads him up so that he can do his time at the same time, but he has to plead to the state charges while he is in federal custody. Okay. Because you can run, again, state concurrent to federal, not federal concurrent to state. And right now, that's why he's stuck at SCDC and not in the federal system. So it, what I'm hearing from he both of you is that it's not that- on the state charges. He's going to get more time, Vinny, on the state charges than Judge Gergel ultimately may give him on the federal charges because there's so many more state charges than he's charged with in the federal charges. So I agree with you. He, I think that he will get more time. 20. I think he'll yeah, get more time. He's going to have to serve uh, whatever the remainder the, is after his federal time in state prison. Under the the federal guidelines, which I looked at today for him, um, based on his amount of loss, there, you know, and I know we're getting into the federal that you didn't want to talk about yet, but well, we're going to talk about that federal, in, in, a, in a second. Um, so let's so just put a pin in that for a second, Scott Duffy. Okay. How strong? is the case against Alec Murdoch for the state charges? For the state financial charges? Yes. The white collar aspects? Yes. They seem, they seem pretty powerful from what I've read and what I've seen. It's, I, I like the idea of the federal charges being uh, moving forward. Obviously, as, as the panel has already spoken, he's trying to get in front of a judge. He's trying to change his plea from guilty or not guilty to guilty. But I, I, with regards to finance crimes, it seems like you have a lot in play with uh, people who are part of the conspiracy, who are, um, you know, being first in line to say, hey, I'll, I'll fall on the sword and I'll testify. So as long as you have those pieces in play, between both the federal and the state, I feel I would feel as an agent that we're moving in the right direction and and uh, ensuring that he's he's going to be found guilty, whether either by plea or or well, by a jury yeah. trial. So let's do this. I started with the state charges, and everyone's talking about the federal charges. So let's talk about the federal charges when we come back. Plus, coming up next hour. 
In Moscow, Idaho, big news in the biggest murder case in the country. The man accused of murdering four University of Idaho students doesn't want the public to see his trial. His attorneys claiming whenever his face is shown, it is prejudicing his right to a fair trial. Tonight, the latest from court as the battle to ban cameras continues. It's the ability to have pool coverage, it's the ability to have still photographers that provide access to a much greater number of people than, than even having just the, the um, reporters who are going to write things down and post stories after the fact. It allows sort of that broader access uh, that, that allows people to see sort of firsthand what is happening, um, and we think that's an important First Amendment right, Your Honor. Tragedy in the Hollywood Hills. Prominent therapist Dr. Amy Hardwick found fatally injured under her balcony. Her ex-boyfriend on trial for her murder. She had had a restraining order against him. He strangled her, lifted her up over the balcony, and dropped her. He never intended on killing her. Is this a case of a jilted lover turned obsessive stalker? The Hollywood Obsession Murder Trial. Trial coverage weekday mornings at 8, 7 central on Court TV. Which part of what I just asked you about the flyers do you take issue with? You take issue that y'all didn't conspire to do that, you and Russell? You yes. take issue with that? You take issue with that, okay. I, I can tell you that Russell Lafitte, Russell Lafitte never conspired with me to do anything. Whatever was done was done by me. That was another big moment in Alec Murdoch's uh, double murder trial where, you know, trying to play the good, bo the good guy, right? Ah, nobody else did anything. It was all me. Um, anyhow. Let's talk about the federal charges. This is the, the, the press release. This is from May 24th, 2023, from the U.S. Attorney's Office, the, the people who are prosecuting Alec Murdoch in, in federal court. They said a federal grand jury has returned a 22-count indictment against Richard Alexander Alec Murdoch, 54, of Hampton, for a conspiracy to commit wire fraud and bank fraud, bank fraud, wire fraud, and money laundering. So those are basically the, the charges against him. Um, if you look at, 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 at these allegations, the first allegation, obtaining money under false pretenses, okay? Murdoch routed and redirected clients' settlement funds to personally enrich himself. Let's bring back in our guests, Eric Bland, Lori Murray, Scott Duffy with us as we take a look at all of this. Um, so let's talk about this that there's a, a, almost a race by Alec Murdoch, and we're talking about this date to plead guilty to these charges. Um, <clears throat> Lori, do you really think that in his mind, Alec Murdoch's mind right now, it's not about will I spend the rest of my life behind bars, but where will I spend my life behind bars? Is, is that really what is the game now for Alec Murdoch, and, and that's why he wants to get into federal court and just admit it? I'd be real surprised if he pled innocent to any of the state charges. I mean, he, you saw him admit to that on uh, the stand when he was testifying. He, everything that he has done has led up to the point where he has set himself up to take a plea. The problem is that the attorney general's office is very tough with their plea negotiations, especially with someone like Alec Murdoch. So it might be a hard plea to swallow. So yeah, I do think it is, where am I gonna do my time? And under the federal system, I took a look at his guidelines today as to what I could figure out, you know, based on the information that I have, which is limited, but you know, he's looking at several different enhancements, several different charges, but just one of these charges would get him maybe seven years, um, maybe a little bit more. But then you stack all of those on, the judge has the, you know, the jurisdiction to stack these, make them consecutive, to uh, do an upward variance on sentencing based on the sheer number of the charges. So there's a lot of things that can go into play here. Judge Gergel can actually really load him up and everybody wants to do their time in a federal prison and not a state prison, everyone. Scott Duffy, why is that? What, 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 what do we have like, uh, uh, 
Why are these federal prisons so nice? I don't understand. I mean, when you say, like, he committed a federal crime, you feel like you want to punish him more, and we're punishing him less by... Where are these cushy places that these federal criminals are going? Yeah, let them continue to uh, to to try to get into the federal prisons. It's um, It's an amazing thing. I'm not quite sure where that all comes from, but having worked quite a few bank robberies, the... Uh, the suspects in these bank robberies would look at me and would look at my state or city partners and say, I want to go to the Fed system and not the state system, so I'll confess as long as I get to go into the federal system. I've had that done many times. And um, if at the end of the day it's going to uh, get somebody who's worthwhile going to prison for what they have done, then um, then let them, let them be served in the federal system. I've been to both, both in the city prisons, state prisons, and the federal prisons. And I, yes, there are some probably cushy federal prisons out there. And then I would say there are some cushy city and local prisons, you know, throughout the country. But I can say from from my Delaware experiences and, and obviously having no federal Delaware prison because they're going to go outside. Right. Then they would be trying to figure out, hey, can I can I get close so family could visit? But Hey, I I, uh, I always like Al doesn't have to worry about that. family visiting. I mean, he killed <laughs> uh, you know two third half his family uh, already. Um, <laughs> what? No, he's convicted he's murderer, Lori. Why? Yes. Why? Why do some people have a problem with the fact that he's a convicted double murderer? He shot and killed Paw Paw and Mags. He killed them. There was nobody else there. That is your prosecution mind talking. And no, that that's is the, the jury. Hello? That's 12 the jurors. Bias that's jury? the verdict. The biased jury oh, come or the, on. the real one? You, you know, oh, come on. I can represent people for free, too, and I'm sure some people will come in to me, too, with different stories. There's we have 10 not jurors heard from who are going to dis disagree with the other two. There so are, you're saying we two don't know, against I, 10. We don't know. Have you talked to them? Because I don't know what they're going to say. I, I don't know that you know what they're going to say. Uh, I do I'm know that. I'm sure I know what three are going to say. Well, th that's three. There's two more that are going to say something different. We don't know what Becky's going to say. We don't know what Judge Newman is going to say. I just think that we we still have we have justice. Don't forget the cup. We have justice, so we got to remember that this might not have been a fair trial. And I still think that wait, wait, whether it's a fair trial or not to, is I think we listen. We I all listen to the evidence. To denigrate twelve jurors that gave seven weeks of their life to say that they were a biased jury. I think that that's unfair. I think that you should be looking for whether or not the trial is fair. That is what justice is, whether the trial is fair or not. And we don't know. We haven't heard from all the jury. And I'm just saying. Jurors. Oh, OK. I did not. I, I said, are they biased jurors? I didn't call anybody a biased juror. I don't know what they're going to say, and neither do you. So the point is, let's hear from them. And then if what they say is true, give them a new trial. And to the point of the state versus federal prison, sir, come to South Carolina and look at our prison system, and you'll completely understand why they want to go federal. Uh, I guess the food's better in federal prison. Yes, All it right. is. Stay where you are, folks. When we come back, we're going to take a look at that roadside shooting. Wait, shouldn't he, aren't there charges related to this as well? And, and how does this play into the mix of everything? We'll take a look when we come back. I've worked hard all my life. I've gone from being a local reporter to becoming a law student to then even going on to teach other lawyers all before I came to Court TV. As a journalist, lawyer, and teacher, I learned the secret to success is speaking in your authentic voice. And I bring that lesson to my show, Opening Statements, every morning on Court TV. Opening Statements with Julie Grant. Weekday mornings at 8, 7 central, only on Court TV. Alex Murdoch. Alex Murdoch? Yes, ma'am. Hampton County 911, where is your emergency? Yes, um, we're on Sakahatchee Road, and uh -huh. there is a man on the side of the road with some oil all over him, he's waving his hand. And you see you were driving, you got a flat tire, somebody stopped to help you, and they shot you? 
Well, they pull over, yes, ma'am, like they were going to help me. He just laying there, fl- waving his hands around? Fine. He looks fine, but it kind of looks like a setup. It was on this rural Hampton County Highway just three months after the gruesome murders of his wife and son where Alec Murdoch called 911 again, this time to report that he had been shot while changing a tire on the side of this highway not far from this church. And can you give me a description of the person that shot you or shot at you? A white fella, a fair amount younger than me, uh, really, really short hair. It didn't take long for Murdoch's story of a stranger shooting him on the side of the road to fall apart. He and we decided he should call SWED. We asked him to record the conversation, which he detailed every element of what he is charged with today. Total cooperation. Gave him the name, told him about the gun, told him about the knife. And instead of arresting a white man in his 40s, police arrested 61-year-old Curtis Eddie Smith. Investigators say Murdoch's shooting was part of a staged suicide, an insurance fraud scheme designed to deliver a $10 million life insurance payout to his surviving son, Buster. Murdoch's defense team says the shooting was related to his secret opioid addiction. Your Honor, he has had a tremendous opioid addiction. The death of his wife and son have put him over the edge in terms of that addiction. And that is why one of the major reasons he's considering having himself killed. The death of his wife and son, again, that's before he was charged with the murder and convicted of the murder of his wife and son. So in, in this roadside, this crazy roadside shooting scenario, he's charged, take a look, uh, this is from the arrest warrant, insurance fraud, filing a false police report, conspiracy to commit insurance fraud. Um, what's going on with this? Is, is the, are these serious charges? Is, is, is this part of what's going on? Let's bring back in our guests, Eric Bland, Lori Murray, Scott Duffy. Uh, Lori, uh, what are your thoughts here on this roadside shooting? Is this just going to go away or is something going to happen with that as well? No, this is another one that's going to, you know, he's got to plead guilty to this. He has to. And again, the attorney general's office, they're not going to just let things go, especially when he's admitted it. So this is one they'll add to the plea list. He'll plead guilty to this one. Okay. Okay. Um, Scott Duffy, let me ask you about um, a scenario like this. You set it up for you to get shot and killed by uh, Cousin Eddie, the strange... Have you ever seen a, a scenario quite like this? Um, no. Because when this happened, I've, ne- I've never even... We were trying to figure out what was going on here. This is bizarre behavior. It's a murder for hire for yourself. It's... Uh, everything that's led up to this is, is, is strange behavior, but it's a web of deceit, and it's just one lie after another, one fraud after another. They all seem to be tied into each other. But um, whether or not it was a bad shot, whether the guy really wanted to do it, and and so now Alex is left to um, to have to explain it, and it's yet just another lie that he's admitted. And gosh, it's just uh, yeah, there, there's a lot here, and and all at the end of the day, you know what's going to be first? The, the 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 charges are stacked against him, and I don't see any way out of any one of them. And you talk about Curtis Eddie Smith. He was the witness, Eric, that we're all waiting at the trial. Is he going to come in? Is Cousin Eddie coming in to testify? Um, By the way, June 23rd, 2022, there was a grand jury indictment uh, against uh, Alec and Curtis Eddie Smith. Some of the charges involved there, criminal conspiracy, money laundering, forgery, manufacturing, distributing, uh, possessing narcotic drugs, trafficking methamphetamine, possession of a controlled substance. Some charges to Alec, some to uh, Cousin Eddie, some to both. Uh, Eric, what are your thoughts about that roadside shooting, his relationship with Cousin Eddie, and what, if anything, it means in terms of what's going to happen to Alec Murdoch? Um, I think that he will plead to the roadside shooting, but he may not plead to the insurance fraud aspect of it. I've heard Dick say that if you read the statute, he technically didn't commit insurance fraud because he never made a claim. Definitely he filed a, a false police report, and there was some, you know, they could get him for obstruction of justice. Cousin Eddie has an interesting relationship with Alex. I was able to uncover after I started my civil suits that he wrote Cousin Eddie almost $2.2 million worth of checks. 
uh, in various denominations from $3,000 to under $10,000 or some to over from 2018 through 2022. In fact, the last checks he wrote were after uh, the week after Maggie and Paul's murder. So um, he was allegedly doing that to get Cousin Eddie to go purchase drugs for him. Um, I'm sure Eddie would have gotten some money for doing that. It's going to be interesting to see. There's a lot of charges against Eddie. We haven't heard anything about it. You know, his cooperation is a good cooperation. I think what they want to find out is where was Eddie purchasing those drugs for Alex and then try to uh, go up the tree and see if they could um, get rid of a, a, you know, a drug cartel in our state that's distributing opioids at a tremendous clip in the low country. Yeah, you say those words, drug cartel. Uh, Scott Duffy, it sounds like something that the FBI would want in on. Um, do you think that happens here? Yeah, the drugs are significant, absolutely. So it all comes down to is he is he blowing out of proportion just how big his habit is, or is he um, is he just trying to seek sympathy from everybody that whether it be the jurors or the public? Because it just seems you know I've I've dealt a good deal of my career with with drug addiction through different uh, cases, and and I've seen all different faces of it. But I, I would be skeptical that um, that Alex is as big of an addict spending some of the kinds of money that I've heard spent on drugs and him still be alive and looking like he like he did during trial. I just very skeptical. All right, Laurie Murray, let's bottom line this right now. Let's bottom line this, okay? Let's presume, okay? I'm going to give you a hypothetical like an expert witness, right? Let's presume right. that Alec Murdoch's double murder conviction gets overturned, okay? It's overturned. What happens, and is there any chance that he ever gets out even for a couple of months? Uh, no, because he's got a no bond. I mean, or a bond that's so high that he can't make it. There's no way he can make bond, even if there's no no charges that he's found guilty of. So he's stuck in jail with a no bond. Uh, but to the cartel point, can I just... You know, yeah, there's a jump lot of in. People, there's a lot of people who believe that, you know, and I've done drug cases for a long time. I have never seen somebody doing $10,000 worth of drugs at one time, buying them for personal use. That's selling drugs. And there are a lot of people maybe like myself, who believe the cartel could have possibly been involved in the murders of Maggie and Paul, which would explain why he's not talking. He's protecting. So that's one of the conspiracy theories that is out there. I think it's a valid one. That's a lot of money to be spending on drugs, Benny. That's a lot of money. And I've never in my 20 years of practice in criminal law seen somebody consume that much. And like he said, look the way that And, and you know what's interesting? You would have uh, the drug cartel involved in two of the biggest murder cases of my lifetime, uh, the Murdoch case and the O.J. Simpson double murder. Are you Interesting. making room for it now? Are you yeah. making room for it in no, that No, I, I, think, I think they're both ridiculous. <laughs>